thank you, thank you so much for coming. I do hope um, that we'll um, just walk this walk this path for the uh, next four weeks. So welcome if you're here in person or watching on the video. It's great to be sharing with you uh, this link course which we've entitled Dark Clouds Deep Mercy. And I do want to just say that actually a lot of the material that we're using both on Sunday mornings and in the evenings comes from the, the book of the same name uh, by Mark Rogop. Uh, the first four chapters are about uh, the Psalms, the Psalms of Lament, and the, the second four chapters, which we're using as the basis of the Lent course, are looking at the book of Lamentations. Uh, so, based on this book, but also drawing on some other material as, as well as some of my, some of my own. So, uh, did you know that there are five books in the Old Testament that are called the scrolls? They are grouped together in the Jewish uh, sacred, sacred books, the five books, the scrolls. And over time, they have uh, been used increasingly to celebrate five fest festivals. They're five festal scrolls, if you, if you will. And uh, the Book of Lamentations is at the heart of those five books. It begins with the, uh, so they begin with the Song of Songs, then follows Ruth, then Lamentations, then Ecclesiastes, and Esther. And Lamentations, uh, the third of them, is used on the 9th of Av, which normally happens during uh, July or August. It is an occasion for mourning, the mourning of the destruction of the temple, both the first destruction and the second destruction. It's a really solemn day in the, the Jewish calendar. So uh, just as Esther is read uh, during the time of Purim, uh, so uh, the Book of Lamentations is read on the 9th of Av as, as, an, act of, as an act of mourning. And uh, increasingly that has included uh, mourning for other occasions in Israel's history, particularly the Holocaust. So uh, there is a weight to its reading um, in Jewish, Jewish heritage, which we have to respect, I think. So uh, we're going to begin with this invocation, uh, which is on the front of our <coughs> notes. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my cry. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. mercy. We have come as the people of God to voice our pain and assert our hope. We have come as the people of God. Where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. Well, whilst um, Lamentations uh, is the name that we know this book by, it's the name that's uh, in our Bibles, uh, originally in the Hebrew text, uh, its name is very simply How. And with an exclamation mark, how has this happened? How could this be? How could God allow this to, to happen? And if you look at the text in front of you, uh, you'll see that both chapter 1 and chapter 2 begins with that question, how? It's a book of literally shock and awe. That's the way that Robot describes it, shock and, and awe. And so uh, if we turn over the page to chapter 2, verse 17, we see there the, 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 uh, the books, a frame of reference. The Lord has done what he purposed. He has carried out his threat as he ordained long ago. He has demolished without pity. He has made the enemy rejoice over you and exalted 
the might of your foes. That's what the book's about. So how, how, how did that happen? Well, we need to think about Israel's history and we know uh, that Israel chose to have a king. Uh, we know that story. And we know that uh, we started off with King Saul, followed by King David, who in many ways was the ideal king for Israel. Uh, and yet, we know too that what Samuel had told the people would happen had indeed happened. God, your king, says Samuel, you don't want a king. And uh, the people say, yes, we do. And Samuel says, well, if you do, you'll get what kings do. Um, he will conscript your kids into the army and he will tax you. That's what kings do. That's the business of kings. And even in David's time, that starts to happen. And it ramps up with Solomon. And Solomon starts brilliantly, but finishes not so well. Uh, you can see the syncretism that will dog both kingdoms that follow Israel and Judah coming in with Solomon. If you've got that many wives from all those different countries, uh, they are going to bring their influences with them. Can I just have a little temple to my God? And Solomon acquiesces and it sows the seed that will follow for a synchristic religious base for Israel. And what happens is that the northern kingdom divides off ten tribes to the north with their own king. And the cycle that we read in the books of Chronicles and in the books of Kings for the northern kingdom is pretty much bad king, followed by bad king, followed by bad king. Uh, for the southern kingdom, which is based around Jerusalem, uh, it's a little bit different. It's good king, okay king, bad king, good king, bad king, bad king, occasional good king. And um, the good kings culminate with Josiah. He's a young king. And in the story of two kings, as that book is coming to its culmination, uh, there is a book of the scroll that is found in the back of a cupboard. Yeah, and they blow the dust off it. And uh, they read it. And it brings everyone to their senses. Uh, we believe, probably, that it's the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, but Josiah brings about uh, a huge program of reform, which is honouring to, to God. Uh, in the Bible's eyes, he's a uh, king after David. Uh, but in many ways, he's not as economically successful as the other kings. Uh, but what he's not doing is pursuing a relationship uh, with, in particular, uh, Egypt, who have always been a draw. It's incredible, isn't it? The, the place of their bondage and their slavery is the place that they want to go back to. Because, uh, because a treaty with Egypt will keep you safe from Babylon, is what they think. But it will not do. And actually we get echoes of this all the way through the Book of Lamentations. So as we open the text, how lonely sits the city that was once full of people, how like a widow she has become, she that was great among the nations. And you wonder at this point, who is the narrator? Because we're not certain if he is sitting on the outside or whether he is part of the people of Judah, the kingdom of Judah, here now. And so he continues, she that was a princess amongst the provinces has become a vassal. She weeps bitterly in the night with tears on her cheeks among all her lovers. 
and, and Judah's behaviour towards Egypt is seen as adultery, going after other relationships, not trusting in the sovereignty of, of God. It's seen as a, an adultery. Among all her lovers, she has no one to comfort her because Egypt's not coming to her rescue. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They've become her enemies. And Judah has gone into exile with suffering and hard servitude. She now lives amongst the nations, finds no resting place. Her pursuers have all taken her, overtaken her in the midst of her distress. The roads of Zion mourn, for no one comes to the festivals. Everything is gone. A young girl is grave and a lot is bitter. Her foes have become the masters, her enemies prosper. Because, why? Because the Lord has done this. The Lord has done this. And actually we have to ask, why has the Lord done this? Because God loves the people of Judah, absolutely. God loves us, but why is, so why has the Lord done this? And the answer is this. Uh, because ultimately, God is concerned for his people. But he's also concerned for the sake of his name and the sake of his glory. And Judah has deliberately, and despite warning, dragged God's name into the mud. Uh, there's no way around it. That's what they've done. Despite, despite the warnings from prophets like Jeremiah, God's name has been dragged through the mud. And as we will see, there has been a complete failure of language. This is to Judah's shame. And so in verse 8 we read, Judah's Jerusalem has seen grievously so that she's become a mockery. And this is the language of shame. All who honoured her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. She herself groans and turns her face away. Her uncleanliness was in her skirt. She took no thought of her future. Her downfall was appalling, with none to comfort her. And then there is this cry, this prayer of anguish. Oh Lord, Look at my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. And now we know, now we know where the writer stands. He's identifying completely with Judah. Look again at the end of verse 11. Look, O Lord, see how worthless I have become. And the depth of destruction is uh, shocking. Mark Froegrup, in the chapter that he writes, um, speaks of a visit to Auschwitz, which left him absolutely shocked. I have never been there. Um, but as I read it, I, I remembered one little incident um, in my life, which was when I visited Albania um, some 27 years ago now. And uh, in the village that I visited, uh, there was a place of complete desolation. It was a site that had been completely cleared. And I said to Tom, the pastor who was showing me around what happened here, and he said, why do you ask? And I said, well, because there is a tangible sense, a palpable sense of evil about this place which I could not explain. And he said to me, that's really interesting, because on this site uh, was a warehouse which stored all of the stuff that was reserved for special party members in Hoxha's regime in this village of Fushares in Albania. And uh, Tom said to me, uh, once Hoxha's regime fell, uh, the warehouse was broken into. 
and it was being looted by the village, literally by everyone. And an oil lamp was dropped, and there wasn't a family that wasn't touched by the devastation that that fire caused. There were so many lives lost within it that all they could do was clear the site. No memorial, nothing, just a, a blank brownfield site, and yet, and yet. And this is what's left of Judah. This is what's left of, of Jerusalem. Uh, it's not nothing, it's absolute devastation. The Lord determined to lay ruin the walls of daughter Zion. He stretched the line. Now, of course, it's not the Lord physically doing it, but in withdrawing his hand of protection. Actually, that's what's happened. But the people have brought this upon themselves. And the reason for it has principally, principally, the bankruptcy of leadership, of spiritual leadership in in Judah. And who are the leaders in Judah at that time? Josiah, the, Josiah was the king, mm -hmm. yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, he was being helped by prophets, yeah? And by the priests. And in Josiah's time, when he he brings everyone back to this following of God. He brings a reform about. Um, it's the last chance. But actually then he's killed in battle. And we read in Kings, Still the Lord did not turn from the fierceness of his great width, Wrath by which he was kindled against Judah, because of all the provocations which Manasseh had provoked him. The Lord said, I will remove Judah also out of my sight, as I have removed Israel, and I will reject this city that I have chosen, Jerusalem, and the house of which is, I said, my name shall be there. And, and Jeremiah keeps repeating that this, um, not threat, but truth, if you, if you choose this way, there are consequences. There are consequences. Because I cannot pr protect something which is, I'm not the part of. Yeah? God's concern is for his people, absolutely. And we will see, see that as we go through the lamentations. But he is too concerned concerned for his for his glory. So as we turn to chapter two, you can see um, how this is working out. Verse one, how the Lord has humiliated daughter Zion. Now if you run your finger down or the left hand of that page, he has he has, the Lord, he has, he has, he has, he has, he has, the Lord, he has, he has, the Lord, the Lord, he has, the Lord, he caused. Yeah? This is, the, the writer's pretty clear about what's going on, isn't he? From verse 1 through to verse 8, it's God who is at work. And the reason there is his fierce indignation, yeah, king and priest. Yeah, and then as you turn the page, verse 14, your prophets have seen for you false and deceptive visions. Everything has been bankrupt in the, in the leadership. It is a book of, it's a book of sorrow. 
So uh, one of the subtitles I've given today is from the book of Ecclesiastes, one of those other five scrolls, chapter 7, verse 4. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Um, we can't go to funerals, can we, without being touched by their, by their sadness. And some are more sad, are more sad than others. But actually, we do well, I think, to learn from their lessons. If nothing else, um, sometimes you just want people to go home and hug their kids and kiss their spouse and make the phone call, yeah? Because they, they bring a reality to our lives, the heart of the wise in the house of the morning. And I think that's why um, in the Jewish faith this book is read every year. It might be the first time it's ever been read in Holy Trinity in 130 odd years. But uh, well, I know that's not the case, but it's certainly the first, uh, maybe the first time we've had a Bible study on it for a very, very long while. And read the whole of the book in its entirety. Uh, the heart of the wise is in the house of mourning. Not that we need to spend all our time there, um, but I do believe that as we think about the problem that faced Israel, the issue of the bankruptcy of leadership, religious, civic, and the monarchy, um, that we need to realize that we get the leadership we deserve. We get the leadership we deserve. And as a community, as a country, as a worshipping community, as a community in full as a nation, yeah, we get the leadership we deserve. We get the leadership we pray for. We get the leadership we work for. Um, so, one of the terrifying things about Lamentations is the way that um, Actually, it speaks of the absolute horror of the situation where um, babies are cannibalised. Because that's how desperate things have, have got. And I want to finish there. Um, and I want to close by using a song that you might not have heard for a while, but I think quite a lot of you will be familiar with. It's um, by Graham Kendrick. And we're going to uh, listen to it now. Who can sound the depths of sorrow? So if you're watching on uh, YouTube, we are going to edit this bit out, but you can find it on YouTube on Graham Kendrick's uh, channel. And uh, I recommend that you do take the time just to pause our video and to uh, uh, listen to that now as we listen here in Holy Trinity. Thank you for being brave. I found that, and one observation which I found really interesting from my point of view, uh, which is not about anything I've heard, but I just found it different because uh, I'm used to walking at, about uh, in the village, uh, doing some of that house of prayer stuff that we learned a while ago, um, some of us, about praying for God's blessing on places. Um, so, and I'm very happy to walk up and down, uh, and when I walk past the barbers, you know, to say actually, in, you know, I know Pete, but Lord, would he bless him today, bless his staff, um, you know, because it's a wholesome place, good place, people get chatted to in there, you know, it's good. 
I'm happy to pray that over the butcher and the, the baker. Yeah. Uh, so it's interesting to walk around with a different, different perspective, uh, you know, listening to what God might be calling us to lament in our in our village. So, um, any, any impressions? Empty shops, banks boarded up. Yeah, yeah, I, I wondered where the, the heart was there, yeah. It was deserted. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No life. Oh, yeah. Mm. Which is... It's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. It's the kids as I couldn't understand why there weren't any teenagers around. No, I thought there would be at least a few hanging yeah. around. Well, there have been times where people lamented how many there are. Yeah, yeah. 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 that's not yeah. the thing, is how we're missing it. That's what we're saying. It is a shame when the kids are on the street and actually there weren't any tonight. No. So that was good. As I went past lab books, there were people in there, and I found myself thinking about being there, and there was, this, um, there was a couple who had won, I don't know, 18 million, yeah, so that's oh, the people from million yeah. Yeah. on the European. Yeah. I found myself thinking of people mm. who um, want how much so gambling, much how much gambling is part of our culture. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. people pinning their hopes on on luck. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other things I have been aware of for a while is just how many eat and drink places there are in, in comparison with the rest of the places. Yeah. The sort of a, a culture of what shall Coffee we do? Shops, shall we eat and shops. drink? Yeah. 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 We, we don't seem to have anything else to do besides eating and drinking or gambling. Mm. I must say, there was a, <coughs> on a positive note, there was a, looked like a really nice group of knit and natterers in the wool shop. <laughs> so, you know. <laughs> oh, that looks nice. I like that. Was, and I okay, thought I was we'll quite have pleased to see something positive. Yeah, that's good. Um, that was, that they, were, they were all smiling, so they looked quite. So, that would be something that we could, on the flip side, yeah. bless. Yeah. Yeah. Lord, uh, yeah. Bless those conversations, bless those friendships. Yes, yeah. 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 May that be a place of hospitality, Lord. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And will you bless that business so it's sustainable mm -hmm. for that to continue? Yeah. Just on the flip side, if we could repeat the exercise, but ask the people on the streets to come into the church and put down their observations mm. on how they feel when they look around here or any church. Yeah, that would be that would, yeah. that would be a really interesting yeah. exercise as well. That would be a really interesting yeah. exercise. Yeah. Um, any others? But I'm just really interested in questions that people receive during this ten minutes. When I, I did a girl, I cheated because I knew what you were going to do. So you did. Exactly. Um, <laughs> and all those things hit me. But one of the other things that hit me is the number of charity shops mm. in the area. Yeah. Yeah. It's just got so many so minus, hasn't it? Yeah. The good thing is that the clothes and things aren't ending up in mm. landfill. It also made me question how there's that much to be donated to charity shops. Mm. And if we're in this way of buy it, get sure to be next week, yeah. or, you know, yeah. like that, a quick turnover of clothing and, <coughs> and things like that. Mm. Um, and again, the clothes shop, you wonder, you know, how you can trade with the stuff you still stand. Yeah. Um, supermarkets, all the supermarkets are high-end supermarkets, apart from Iceland, aren't they? Yeah. So, and the other thing I notice, as you walk out of here and we're collecting for the food bank, and yet, you know, a loaf of bread in Waitrose or costume, you know. 
So there's that sort of polarity in our society. Mm -hmm. But yeah. Einstein, on the other hand, you know, we're advertising, weren't they, on the window, how many items they sell at less than a pound? Yeah, I was going to say, Iceland is the exception. Iceland's the exception, yeah. Iceland's the yeah. exception I didn't mention. And the yeah. school voucher thing, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But I also found, as I went past Iceland, thinking about the young, young man who sells the big issue. Adrian, Adrian. Adrian, yeah, I couldn't remember his name. Adrian, and the necessity for, you know, sort of giving yeah. support to somebody in our community. Uh, one of the things I noticed, which I wasn't expecting, um, was uh, cruise culture mm. in Formby, mm. a particular thing about Formby. Uh, all of the uh, travel agents. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Advertised cruises, yeah. Mm. <laughs> Sorry for those who are <laughs> 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 I mean, I'm not a cruiser by any means, yeah. and I met people on there who've been on 94 and 100 yeah, cruises. Yeah. And me and Mum right. were on our first one together, me and Mum last so week. I think, so you look great. And what I did think on the cruise actually was it was actually a lot better value for money than a holiday because actually it was quite a good value, I thought, for what we paid for what we got. There was a real community on board. You could go on a cruise on your own and be welcomed yeah. and yeah. find things yeah. to do. Yeah. And I actually yeah, thought that can. was really nice. We made so many friends on that cruise and talked to people. Every night we sat at dinner with complete strangers and we made friends of those people. And it was really interesting. And on holiday, you don't do that normally. Mm -hmm. And actually, it was good. Mm -hmm. And there was a Christian community on cruise. You could go meet with the Christians. Where'd you get that on holiday? Mm -hmm. Well, I, yeah. That's so, good. And they were trapped, I don't know about the environment, yeah, but been, been they did do a lot. They kept talking about your recycling, they were better at recycling than all, yeah. you know, a lot of other places. They're very conscious about it. It's interesting that, though, about it, because we was, we, I was being flipping early about teenagers and whether we want them there or not. But I think part, it's interesting walking through there on a, on a quiet night, isn't it? Because and partly, I think, the reason you don't see many young people except straight after school, whatever, is, is the, People have gone in on themselves, haven't they? With you know, mm -hmm. gaming culture and mm -hmm. whatever. And, yeah. and, and I think I've seen mm -hmm. that through working in schools as well over the years. That there's, there's been a retraction. Yeah. yeah. Which in some ways it solves some problems, perhaps in terms of people being around and about in public spaces and potentially getting on nerves of other people. But um, so the the wool shops, are, you know, a good thing, isn't it? Because that's a little community doing it's something. Lovely. You mentioned yeah. it. But so, but normally in Formby, the time you'll see and hear something is, of course, when everybody's drinking and eating. Mm -hmm. um, so it's quite interesting just walking up and down on a night which isn't like yeah. an everybody out night, and mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But I think it? you feel how lucky we are, really, in a lot of ways, because there will be a lot of streets where you could walk up and down where you'd be too frightened mm -hmm. to walk yeah, up yeah. your own as a woman, mm -hmm. or where you know there would be people on the street sleeping, so yeah. in, in many ways yeah. we have really quite a, a, you know, a good area, community. So, um, I, that's just what I noticed. I don't know, so the other thing I noticed was the, um, that we're aware of, of course, is uh, lack of affordable housing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, 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 Mm -hmm. A lot of estate agents and 
It's always none of the young people can afford to buy anything. Yeah, no. <laughs> it's getting worse. But Close uh, one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the things that I noticed as well is that the, the war memorial is, is quite prominent in the, mm. in the village. And there's a lot of talk about war at the moment, isn't there, with Putin and all the rest of it. And, and I think one of the things I'm going to take from tonight is what Mark said about you get the leader that you deserve. Yes. Oh my word, I've never thought of that. Ever. Well, it's, it, it's, it's pretty trenchant, isn't it? Yeah. We watched the news tonight before we came out about the nonsense in Parliament. Yeah. I'm not making a political point about one element of it or the other, just the whole thing. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, instead of debating yeah. about, you know, real difficult things that are all there, uh, Okay. But memorial, memorials are important, aren't they? Yeah, yeah absolutely. And um, we've got yeah. the, uh, we've also yeah. got one in the park. Yeah, yeah. Um, they are important. Uh, um, and because of course, you know, there's, there are, and there'll be memorials at, at Auschwitz. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, rightly, rightly, for, you know, there are millions that died in places like that. Mm. And there are millions that are, yeah, have died since. And are dying now. And are yeah. dying. And are dying. And are dying. Yeah. And are dying now. Yeah. Are dying yeah. now. Um, so um, I think what my hope was that that would lead us into just a short time when we are in prayer, when we just might want to articulate one sentence. Um, how has this happened? Or how? long will this continue mm-hmm. yeah and you might just want to put some substance into that sentence and articulate it out loud on behalf of our community as as a lament um, so i will start off And Lord, because it's an industry I've been involved with for half my life, uh, I just want to ask uh, about our banks and their management and their direction. And I want to pray, Lord, how, how, and call out how long will we allow them to be managed in a way which is not helping the very people that they're there to serve. Lord, I cry out and ask, how long do we have to be led by people who have lost their way, who have lost the heart of serving our country and our world and serving you? I pray, Lord, I cry out to you and ask for you to send people who will do a better job. In the same way, Lord, we cry out for the culture of food and drink, especially drink, and the destruction that that brings to people when they tip themselves over the edge and are no longer able to go back. But I cry out for our National Health Service to walk past the doctors and think about the surgeries in this area. Thanks for the good things they do, but I know there's an increasing feeling that that relationship of doctor and patient is becoming more and more distant. Mm. People are unsure who their doctors are, unsure whether they'll get an appointment. 
unsure when they're diagnosed if they'll be seen timely in hospitals. Quite out how long are those people working in our NHS feel pressured and struggle to cover? How long will it be temporary people there? How long will be they? It's really depression the situation. How long will it not really be a priority? So we turn to our sheets. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits. And in his word I put my hope. My soul waits for the Lord. More than the watchmen wait for the morning. And so as we close our time, both here and online, neither death nor life can separate us from the love of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. God the Father, by whose glory Christ was raised from the dead, strengthen you to walk with him in his risen life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you all, now and forevermore. Amen. Amen.